What is that? Your friend here? You can't go in there. You know the rules. Stay out. There's a box turtle. It's been hanging out in the backyard. Seems to really like the tortoise area. See it out here several times a week over the last month or two. It can get out. I see it in the lawn fairly often. There's a pretty big gap in the fence that I put in over here. I'm gonna try and get down. I don't know if you'll be able to see it over. It's in there. There's another gap on the other side. So oh, that's nice. Always good to know you've created a space that wildlife feels safe. And this turtle is very friendly. I made the mistake of giving it a whole bunch of earthworms and now it follows me when I come in here and when I'm in the yard. Not a pet. Free to leave. Can go and do whatever it wants live its own life i stopped feeding it because well this isn't good right want the wildlife to be wild i didn't know that it was going to get attached that quickly but turtles are smart is that your friend i know you love your turtle friends look at this weed hey what's up garden friends jeff here how's everybody doing hope you're doing well i'm great beautiful day not a great day for if you want to hang outside and play in the sun but for having the camera out breaking a sweat pretty nice got some fertilizer here Finally, I ordered this quite a while ago. Well, maybe like two weeks ago. I've been out, it's been a month. The plants weren't getting their proper minerals and everything. So here's what's going on this week in this week's video. Picked up basically right from where I left off last week. So there's still plants on the patio. Have the begonias here. This is in a video, the video prior to this one. I would like to get these potted up. He's having a good time. Do something fun with the trailing begonias and then just work on some planters. I have those seashells over there that need to be planted up. I have some spaces that I'd like to tidy and just do something different with over here. Maybe get some color and some annuals and around these rocks in front of the uh, tortoise pin over here. And you know, just outside gonna be doing plant stuff. I started to pot these up last night when I was done filming that begonia video. And then I decided that I should bring y'all along because I gonna be doing the indecisive where do I want this and how am I gonna do this thing and people usually either get very annoyed or very entertained by that so here you go. Uh, I was going to say get things started off by potting up these begonias but I am out of slow release and I'd like to make sure that the slow release gets mixed in with their potting mix. I have some that's supposed to come today but that's from Amazon. I order it in bulk usually from Greenhouse Mega Store, and it just it probably won't be here for another week and a half. I don't want to wait that long so I got an Amazon and got a small amount of it to get delivered here today, but Amazon usually with their, it'll be their tomorrow thing, usually means it shows up at like 9.30 at night. I won't be potting up any begonias in the beginning of this video. This is the fertilizer I've been using this year, and I'm really liking it. An all-purpose may seem more ideal, but what I really like about this is what you can see right there for continuous liquid feed programs. So if you have <laughs> a big batch mixer, an injector system, it's a good option. 24 nitrogen, eight on the phosphorus and 16 on the potassium. What's nice about that is you don't have excessive levels of the phosphorus. That can be really important for plants like hibiscus. Hibiscus don't want that phosphorus number to be very high. They want a lot more potassium and even a little bit less nitrogen than this, but it's hard to find a well-balanced fertilizer that I can use on everything without having to go, uh, 20, 20, 20, that's kind of high on the hibiscus. It's not going to hurt them, but it's not the balance that I want all of my hibiscus to have. And there are a lot of hibiscus out here. The other thing I really like about this one is that it acidifies. So if your water is more alkaline, like mine is, pH is usually between like seven, six and eight, three. It varies drastically throughout the year. It has an acidifier in it, so that helps bring the pH of the water down without it being too terribly low. I like the breakdown of everything that's in there. The 24, 8, 16 up high, and then it's got the boron, the sulfur, the copper, iron, manganese, molybdenum, zinc, and some chelated iron. This is a little bit more on the pricey side, like 70 to 90 dollars for a 25 pound bag, but this lasts, it lasts me for a few months, and I do a lot of fertilizing out here. Generally get about two months out of one of these bags. The only thing that's not great about it is that because this is really formulated for an injection system, I just kind of have had to eyeball it when it comes to using the hose and sprayer. I'm probably not supposed to do that. When things are formulated for an injection system. That generally means that they need to be fully dissolved before application or mixed and dissolved before going into application. But I haven't had any issues with 
what I've been doing so far. So that's been good. Have I, did I, this is, are you bored? Probably way too much about a bag of fertilizer. I'm sorry. Well, I guess I didn't need to start the video. The turtle, it was the turtle. I got excited about the turtle. It's the fertilizer thing. Can't do that because both the hoses are running because the pool was low today. Can't plant anything. So I'm waiting on the slow release to come in the mail. Turtle's gone. It took off. So no more turtletainment to go on here. And very, very, very sad news. The sprayer's broken, fell and cracked. I've had this for about four or five years. It's been a good run. I'm really, really bummed about this though because they don't sell this anymore. I can't find it for sale anywhere. There's one nursery that I think is in like Idaho or something who has it, but you have to go there and pick it up. So that's not doing that. Admirer's website said that they had them. You had to order in a pack of eight and I was like, hey, I'll do that. I'll have eight of them, fine give some away have some extras so did the whole thing had to sign in create an account 10 minutes worth of just bull work and once you're actually signed in it said oh no items not available don't actually have it but annoyed by that feel kind of scammed i have a box to open wasn't planning on doing that on camera but hey why not there's so many things that i want to plant but again i'm gonna wait for that slow release to come in the mail because i want to I want to make sure there's slow release around the roots when I put these things around. It's mostly annuals. I have those red candy and patience I'd like to do some stuff with. And all of the uh, begonia. Where'd my tripod go? There we go. It's been a busy morning. You got to get out of here, dude. You can't just stand here. Move. Go on. Out. I didn't even hint at what might be in here, did I? <laughs> nope. It's fine. Who doesn't like a surprise? Can you tell what that is? Huh? Look at that. Nice big plant. This is a good probably four and a half, five feet tall. Okay, I'm happy with this. There's a whole story that goes behind this. I had a wasp or a bee, I don't know what it was. It's a big looking thing that has a stinger laying on my hand and flew away. Bamboo steak, like that. That'll come in useful for something else. And now it's down here. Turbo, you gotta move, baby. You can't stand there. You can't, you gotta go. You gotta go, baby. Can you just go somewhere else? Go on. Good boy, out of the way. This is nice. Mind isn't blown, but we'll talk about it. There's a whole story that goes behind this plant. Shadows are still harsh, but you get the picture. It's a coconut palm. This is a special coconut palm. I've wanted one of these for a while. You may be able to tell from looking at the inside. See some color in there? Looks kind of orange. This summer, I really, really, really wanted to get a new yellow or gold Malayan coconut. They're my favorite. It's just so colorful and gorgeous. I love the contrast. So I got online, ordered one, and this is what they sent me. That's a green Malayan. Not what I wanted. I don't, I, I, it's just a green coconut palm. Not my favorite, don't care for them. It's cute, but not what I wanted. But I was also trying to find one that was relatively inexpensive because the cost of coconut palms has just gotten absolutely outrageous. They used to be crazy cheap. This one right here, was my second attempt at getting a gold Malayan. This one actually is a gold Malayan. It just has no color. It's very bland and very boring. As it grows and gets more sun, the color should come out on it. But I don't know, I'm not impressed. From Eureka Farms too, much more pricey of a place to order the plants from, but I figured they've been around, they have a large selection that I could trust them. And this is what I got when I ordered a three to four foot one. It's okay, but I'm still not crazy about it. Finally, I was like, okay, you know what? What's going to have color for sure? A red spicata. Doesn't have as much color as it will when it gets more sun and starts to do some maturing. The red spicata is a very special coconut palm. And to my knowledge, other places sell them, but I've only seen them for sale over the last like year or so through Eureka Farms. So the green coconut, it's just green fronds. Gold Malayan has a goldish yellow to even orange tone inside of it. The red has, well, red. This is orange. It's not as vibrant as what I was hoping it was going to be. But out of the three coconuts that I've tried so far this summer, this one's got the most color. Now, just have to give it some time, wait for the plant to grow, and eventually that redness should come out on it, especially with some maturity. It's also supposed to be one that stays smaller and has a more slender growth. Just a colorful, fancy coconut palm. There was a little bit of, I don't want to say drama getting this plant, but I ordered it and then a, like two, two and a half weeks passed. It hadn't shown up in the mail, but 
within a few days of ordering it, I got a notification saying that it had been shipped. So I don't know, maybe a week or so later, week and a half later, I checked the tracking and the tracking said that the label had been created. And I'm like, okay. So it's no longer saying it's been shipped, it's just saying that the label's been created. So I contacted them and I said, hey, what's going on? I would need to know if this plant is actually coming in the mail. There's a heat wave moving through, need to be prepared for if there's gonna be a plant left on my front porch. I had emailed them when I ordered the plant and said, could you please send one that has some nice color to it? And I did that because I ordered the gold, Malayan, and it didn't have much color. So I was like, please send me something that actually is close to looking like what's in the pictures. Just asked them to try and pick something out with some good color. Didn't hear back from on that. I just got the thing saying that the item had shipped. Then everything I told you about passed, I emailed them and they replied basically saying that they had sent a picture of what they were going to send me to a wrong contact to someone else. So they sent me the picture. I said, yeah, it looks great. And here we are like a week and a half later. So I've just, I've been waiting for this plant since like late June. It's finally here. And <laughs> that's you hanging out in the shade of the palm tree turbo. Lucky G, so cute. And that's the end of that story. That was my coconut palm journey. I'll be talking about these more in depth in a different video because I did want to get multiple types of coconuts and do a video about them. More detail than what I'm going into. And I've just told you about how they look different. There's more that can go into these and other types that can be grown. But that's the background. So I'm very excited about this one too. I'm gonna get it lots of light, lots of love. Hopefully bring that color out. I would like to get it potted up. I had mentioned that I was holding on to some vinca when I was planting up annuals in a video a couple weeks ago. It's because in each one of the coconut palms, I wanted to make sure there was a vinca coming down the edge of the containers. So they'll be in different containers, but by having that one plant that's the same in all of them, it will help bring some uniformity. That's not the word. Uniformity? Uniform? What happened to my brain? It'll all go together much more nicely. They all have the same trailer coming over the front when they're in different containers. That's why I held on to two of the Vinca when I was doing all that annual planting. I would like to get this potted up, but can't because I'm waiting on the slow release. I'll go ahead and just cut off right here. Hopefully sometime today that fertilizer will come. If not, then pick up tomorrow. A few hours late. <sighs> gonna let this defog, then open up some mail. Forget that. I don't feel like waiting for it to defog. I'll just use my shirt. It's the nice quick dry material seems pretty smooth shouldn't scratch up the lens how's that the good professional as always yeah, a few hours have passed baseball game happened it was good cards won that's always great swept the marlin this is that's not i didn't know that's what was in there here's the slow release that's here also got a bit of a surprise in the mail the giant bulk bag came too. I think I ordered this on Monday and just assumed it wouldn't be here for a long time because the one I showed at the beginning of the video took like a week and a half, two weeks to get here. This one showed up in two days and I had ordered these. I think I explained this because I didn't expect this to be here for probably another week. So this way I would have something to work with and I just have to sit around and not be able to do it. These are like $18 a pop. These little things, this little, what is this, two pound thing? $18. So I spent $36 on these and this was less than twice that for a 20, 25 pound bag. Yep. I'm not mad about it. It's fine. I'm just glad that it's here. It's just some more stuff to work with. Finally get to potting up these begonias. I'd like to get them off the table. What I have going on here, a whole bunch of begonias. These were all in the video prior to this one. I talked about every single one of these. They're very pretty. I had said in that video that I was going to do one of these Lois Burks in this container back here. This blue one with that fun pattern on it it does look really nice like that. I think that that's a great combination. But with the spotting on the leaves and then the texture on the pie, I think something darker and uh, solid would look better in that container. It's not as big and bold of an instant impact, but it'll grow. So that's the direction I'm going to go with that one. For these, I have two of these pots right here, which are not Lechuga. Who makes these? I don't remember. It's German Schwarter, maybe? That sounds right. I think that's what it is. Have a nice look at the Oh, that's nice. What a nice, healthy looking root mass. It's very soft and velvety blend that they're in. It's not too loose, not too firm. And then I have a great big bucket of soil that I started to blend up yesterday. I probably need to do some more blending on it because it started to rain while it's in the middle of that. So I threw a plastic bag over it and went inside. I'm gonna get this mixed into that and come back over and start getting these all potted up. You know, realize I should probably go ahead and bring a batch of the soil over here so you know what I'm working with. This is just an all-purpose potting mix that I have added sand to, a pretty hefty amount of sand because I'm out of perlite. I would have liked to have added some perlite to this, especially for a begonia. They want things organically rich and very, very, very well drained. So there's a good amount of sand in here. 
There are bark chunks, just an orchid blend. There's some charcoal and some pumice in there, but not a lot because I use them just a bag of orchid blend to help loft it up to allow more oxygen in there. And then there's a teeny tiny bit of bone meal, earthworm castings, and one of these. Yeah, an entire container of this. Not in this, in the giant bucket that I have mixed up over there. This is probably, I'd say, 15% of the total volume that I mixed up. The breakdown on this one, maybe I should have talked about it. 15, 8, 23. That's what I like to see here. Again, for plants like hibiscus, and really just a lot of plants where you want a lot of green and you're not trying to push them right into flowering. You just want them to flower because they're happy and healthy plants. This is, of course, what I'm going to want with the begonias back here. The breakdown is right there. That's going to be hard to see, but it has a good blend of your micros and macros of the various minerals that you want to see in there. Not quite as complex as some of the fertilizers like Osmocote, but I trust this. There are other things I like about it, like Jack's Classic, they say that the product is made with sustainable, eco-friendly formulas that are utilized, that you have a renewable source of the phosphorus and magnesium, that they get recycled from wastewater. That's good. And this is one that is water distributed. And some of them are heat distributed, slow release fertilizers that is. So they're gonna be more temperature dependent. If they're one that's temperature dependent, that's not really going to do anything for your plant if it's not warm enough. If it's one that's distributed through water, then you water the plant and that helps leach out the minerals. Get that in there. So there's just a small lip. Don't want it up high. Hate when I plant things too high. I feel like I say that a lot, but if you plant them too high, then it's hard to give them the heavy drinks. You give it a little bit of water and everything just goes rushing off the top. That's a big waste of time and annoying, right? I prefer just to be able to give the plant a nice drink and not have to constantly baby it back and forth with little bitty sips to ensure that the soil isn't spilling out of the sides. I also tend to go heavy with my slow release, which isn't always a good idea. This little container here says that this is good for like 60 pots. I think that's what it said. Two pound tub can feed over 60 containers or 75 square feet of a garden for up to four months. Okay, yeah, but what size container, right? It doesn't say that. The blend that I've been mixing up, I'm doing in a 25 gallon pot, so I feel like that's probably a fair distribution. Low release fertilizers, continuous release fertilizers. Oh, there's the name, Shurich, right there. The pot, Shurich. Now we know. They uh, really do need to be by the root zone, so having them in the potting mix before the plant has even rooted out, not totally necessary, but when you look at the shape of this plant, once that starts to fill out, how likely do you think I'm going to be to remember to come in here and delicately pull the plant back and go and add some? I'm not great about doing that. And these are vigorous begonias too, so they should start rooting out very quickly. It's nice and humid and warm out here, so I would imagine they'll get going fast. This one's, this one's thirsty. That's fine. I'm not doing anything rough with them. Just gently moving them around, not messing with their roots at all, and then we'll get watered in. Ideally, would of course water it in first, but I don't feel like waiting another three hours to get this going. Just going to be gentle with the plant. All right, so both of the Lois Burks are in these Shurich containers. Not the best pairing, personally. I don't feel like it's the, the best look for these begonias just because the foliage blends in with the pot so much. But I wanted them to be in pots that were the same since I have two of them. Even though the foliage, I feel like really blends in with the container, that one, that's not all that big of a deal because I think this is a nice looking plant. It'd be nice to just appreciate the plant itself. The container doesn't need to stand out. But when these get flowering, even more heavily, I really enjoy the way these flowers look with those pots. That's the other reason I went with those. And I feel like they are just the right size for these two. Okay, next up. This one, it's the pot broke. I'm gonna use it anyway. I haven't seen it for sale since I got it, so I can't replace it. I don't know where the chip went, but I still really like the container. It's not particularly sharp. I wouldn't consider it hazardous, it's just, it's got a little chip in it. It's fine. That's character. Don't hit on my pot. Take the plug out of the bottom. Doesn't need that. That'll be a problem. I was thinking to do the maculata pink spot in this one just because it has some height to it. In that video I talked about how I would like for this plant to go in a container where you can appreciate the beautiful flowers on it as well as the foliage. So not just looking at it from above. It's not 
a drastic amount of height. That's the amount of height that I would say will do. This is fine, this will work. I do have to plant it down a little bit lower though because the pot has the chip in it, which does somewhat defeat everything I was just saying about the container being taller, doesn't it? I'm having second thoughts about that pairing. I get through the rest and then see if maybe I can find a different pot for it. Just because with the chip in it, I can't have it planted up high enough for it to have that nice shape that this, you know, that they shape that I want to see out of the plant. So I think it would be better off in something else that I can have up higher. Is camera gonna overheat? Camera needs a break. Okay, is that better? You good? Chilled out? Yes. Love this camera, but it loves to overheat when it's warm outside. I potted one up off camera. You'll get to see it. Moving on to the torch red angel wing. The proportions are bugging me, so I decided, even though it's intending on keeping these containers to just one plant a piece, I think this would look nice with a caladium in it. Doesn't that look good? I think that's a good pairing. It just needed something light to balance. I got that leaf so muddy. Needed something lighter in color to balance it out. So much fun trying to get soil packed in around plants that want to droop over the surface of the soil. Especially with the begonia, you have to be so careful you don't snap those stems. Begonias are very snappy, very brittle plants. This is good though. Might be the one instance where it's kind of okay that the plants are just a smidge thirsty because they're not going to be as prone to just snap. Not advising that you repot a dehydrated plant unless it's, you know, you have some kind of issue going on where the plant won't rehydrate and needs to be repotted. Just saying that this may have worked out for the best. I don't know. Just trying to justify my impulsivity here. That's all. And there it is. Some nice freshly potted begonias. I didn't see a container that I liked better for the uh, pink spot maculata. So this will just have to do, I'll keep my eyes peeled for something that's nice and tall. I have some containers that are really tall, but they're like two feet tall. I think that's overkill. That's not quite what I'm going for with those. I put the, what is this, Mistral Pink. Usually sold more as an annual type. The great one for hanging baskets and trailers has just a cascade of lots of pink bell-shaped begonia flowers on it. That one's planted all by itself in this coral container. I thought that maybe those colors would go nicely together. And y'all saw what happened back there with the Lois Sparks and finish it all up with the Torch Red Angel Wing. I love how that looks with that container and especially with the white of the Caladium. The little table down there in between some lounge chairs where I think that will do well. Before I do any of that, I think maybe I'll set these over here where the drip will hit them tonight and tomorrow. I'm gonna have water them by hand too. I just wanna make sure they're really well hydrated and then focus more on getting them set someplace nice and pretty. Okay, well, it's nothing monumental, but I'm glad to at least have gotten those few things planted so I can get the rest of these off the table. The cascading begonias, I had planned on, try not to make anybody dizzy here. I wanted to mount at least one of them from the trunk of this queen palm here. I don't fully have a plan for that. I ordered some of the half circle coconut liners. It's what I've done in the past on palm trunks when I put like orchids and things up in them. Those won't be here until maybe tomorrow, hopefully. But I haven't really <laughs> made a plan of action as to like what I'm going to do in that process. I'll probably just find some twine and try and make it happen. Watch out, watch out. I gotta get through here, gotta move. Good boy. I can't plant those up yet. This one I'm going to give away to a friend. Don't think I'm gonna be keeping this one. It's that charm pink variegated one. I thought about it and I'm just not that into it. So I don't wanna take up space trying to figure out what to do with that one. Something else to take care of that I'm not crazy about. What's the point? Okay, now uh, the Echeveria. What was I gonna do with this one? Oh, the begonias, they're all lined up over here. They had a drink, they should be good. I'm brainstorming some ideas with this spot. I had the Stromanthi there. We, we're supposed to be talking about Echeverias. Get back to the Echeveria in just a moment. I turned around and got distracted. Because I remembered I didn't give an update on the begonias and I want to move on to something else until have wrapped that up. The Stromanthis were in the spot last year. They did great this year. Not, they, they look terrible. And I had thought about, I don't think I'm going to do this, but just brainstorming with the idea of maybe grabbing a couple more of those Mistral Pink begonias and tucking them in here or doing those Candy Mountain, the Red Candy Mountain, their impatience that were over there and tucking those in down here. But I'd say that these verbena are gonna keep growing. I don't need to have anything under there. Those are eventually, in the next few weeks, going to come over the rest of that pot. We won't be able to see what's down there. That was a big waste of time. Hope you enjoyed. Echeveria, I want that to go in the top of the seashell planter here. I should probably go grab something that I can scoop that stuff out with. This would be a great time to have a hand trowel. Unfortunately, Turbo, 
has run off with every single one of my hand trowels. So I don't know where most of them are right now. I have that Root Slayer knife shovel. That's not going to be all that useful for something like this. So hands it is, hands work fine. Got through the hard stuff with that pot. Don't need to scoop out very much. This is already a very well-drained mix. Oh, there's a fourth bud coming up in there. Is the camera gonna focus? Can you see it? One flower stuck, two, third one right there, which is why I bought this. There's a fourth one coming up right in there. That's awesome. Bonus flowers, gotta love that. And the dead stuff out down below and that should pop in here no problems now i'm wishing i had the hand trowel <laughs> need something narrow to get in here with trying my best to not get the soil onto that foliage you know the leaves on these echeverias when they have that fine powder on them once you rub that off it's not coming back okay yeah that'll do it i know it's crooked but that's just the nature of this container. This side is higher than this side. That's not something that was well thought out by the manufacturer. I talk about that every year when I plant it up. That's just something that bugs me about this pot. If the echeveria were smaller, I could get it flat down in there, but this that's just how it's gonna have to work. Um, down here in this little one, I'm going to put one of these Semper Vivums. This is the Chicks and Charm trio come on camera do your job this is the only one thing you're supposed to do there we go it has cosmic candy in it mint marvel and sugar shimmer this should be perennial in this container which i love that was kind of what i was going for with this one probably find something to stick back there but instead of doing that would rather just try and get this centered into the pot i think that makes more sense boom <laughs> here we go perfect isn't it beautiful eh, a lot of years i go pretty elaborate with these containers but as don't want to do that this year. I think just having one big simple succulent in the top of that one is fine. It's already in July here, right? If I had planted these up in May, it'd be a different story. I think this is good for that one. The hens and chick down below, it'll spread out. It'll fill in that top. When I water it in, that'll wash all the dirt off the top and get it looking nice again. Okay, yes, much better. Plants are off the table. Still a couple left. I'm, I'm not ready to do what I want to do with those yet. That is what had been bugging me. I'm going to get the fertilizer put away. I'm probably going to call it a night and pick up in the morning, assuming the weather's good enough, and uh, just knock some more stuff out. Get some more stuff done out here. It is disgusting outside, by the way. Totally different from this morning where I was like, oh, it's a beautiful... No, it is so gross. It's only like 90, but 100% humidity and zero breeze. Like you just, it just feels like you're standing in a box of sweat. So we're going to swim some laps, call it a night, and pick up in the morning. Good morning. It was a beautiful morning when I came out here. Hazy, very humid. It got kind of windy. I'm picking up the camera and right as I picked up the camera, I just noticed all the trees just bending. And then I heard crashing and then I turned around and palm trees down, palm trees down. And you look up and you can see, oh, those are moving kind of fast. Maybe not the best time to be picking up the camera and trying to do yard work. Which is unfortunate because it's not hot out, which means that this is the ideal time. This is when I want to be out here doing the yard work because it's not hot, but there's a lot of haze. So y'all can't even see what I'm doing. No, I'm not picking the palm trees up. I'm going to wait for whatever this is to pass. Why pick them up? They're just going to blow back over. Doesn't look like they're on top of anything that could hurt them. That pot doesn't appear to be broken. I hope it's not. I would be... So sad if that pot broke. Spicata took a tumble. That's fine. It'll be okay. I'm glad this one didn't blow over. That would have been bad. This one, it, that was not easy to get that thing into that hole. Same thing with the Alexander pumps. That's why I dug out the ground and put those pots down in there. Not all the way. That would be too deep. They'd hit the water. They'd just be sitting in water if they went down all the way. In years past, I had the queen, years past last year, up to last year, I had this queen palm right here and I ran cable around it and staked those down into the ground back there, which was a pain. It wasn't fun to do and unattractive and a little bit dangerous. Couldn't really walk through there without having cables and you know, stepping over them and everything on a wall where there's a drop off. And this just looks better. I gotta get that dead piece of frond cut off of there. I need to invest in a tree pruner. I have some, but they're all broken. I guess if I'm going to sit out here and talk, I may as well try and get some stuff done and just see what happens, right? Oh, nope, never mind. Now it's raining. Spoke too soon. I'll try again later. The joys of summer. I'm not going to complain about rain. Every drop we get is a drop we need. I don't know if this is going to work. There's so many problems i don't even know where to begin maybe it's not that many problems i just need better strength and this is shaped stupid too stupidly it's a few hours later 
rain has passed, breeze is gone, it's like mid 90s and so, so disgustingly humid outside. And uh, this is, I need to, did I, I don't think I talked about this, did I? I think I would know since I spent the entire time it was raining inside editing everything up to this point of the video. No, the coconut liner came in the mail. I mentioned that in the beginning of the video, I wanted the coconut liners to get here. So I could hang the cascading begonia up in the queen palm there. Pardon the shadows, it's many, many, many hours later. It's like 5.30 in the afternoon. Took a long time for the rain to get out. I kept this folded in half, drilled a hole right here, and then drilled another one that's harder to see down here. So there are two points to tie this into the trunk of the tree. And now I have coconut fiber all over my drill bit. Slice it off with a blade, that's not a big deal. The issue I have with this basket is that the, or liner that is, is the front of it, just like the seashell planter, is higher than the back. Why'd they do that? That's just dumb. That doesn't make any sense. So the soil line can't be any higher than this, but I'm gonna want my trailer to be higher than that so that it'll spill instantly. I don't feel like waiting for it to grow to spill. I want it to be coming over the edge right away. I don't know if it's because it's potentially would be a little bit more flat inside of the basket, but if you ever look at those wire half baskets you put on like a fence or railing, well, whatever you do with those, they don't ever have a flat bottom. It's usually just a circular part against a flat part which is what this is, so why did, it's just stupid. But you get what you pay for, I got the cheapest ones I could find that would be delivered the quickest, because I really wanted to get this done. That's not that big of a deal, can make that work. Holes are drilled, so now I just need to get some nice sturdy string to put through those holes and go up there and put it on the tree. Sounds easy enough, right? But here's the prop, look at my string. Probably not the most sturdy. I don't think this would be the smartest thing to use. There's gonna be a decent amount of weight in that basket when the soil's moist. Ooh, I should also run a drip to that. I should do that, don't wanna to forget to do that while we'll the ladder out here. I thought I had some thin paracord in the garage, but I don't, I don't know, I can't find it. So this is all I have. This is just cheap, like, kite string. Just use it to bundle up branches and things that get pruned out of the tree to take out to the yard waste. I'm gonna go keep looking for some better string some more sturdy cordage. Hopefully I can find something because I really want to get this done. Look around some more, see if I can find some better string because without something more sturdy, I don't know if I'll be able to get this done. It ain't pretty, but it'll do. Glad there's an Ace Hardware right down the street from my house. That was useful. So it's not pretty. I don't think that's going to matter once it's up there though, right? Now just figure out how I'm going to film this because the sun is going to be directly in my face and in the lens of the camera. I guess there's not that much to film yet. I'll try and get this tied up and then pick up from there. Yeah, that was sketchy as f Maybe not the safest setup, but got it done for the most part. Now just have to plant it up. I figured it'd be easier to hang this up before planting it up. It's going to be more trips up and down the ladder, but that way I'm not, you know, dropping plants and dirt all over the place. I wrapped the top cord around underneath this old boot right here, this old strap that's on the trunk and there's another one on the other side. So that's gonna add some extra stability. This should hold until a squirrel climbs up there and decides to chew through the cord. It is nylon cord, so hopefully that won't happen. So this great husk for them to be chewing on, so they'll probably leave that alone, hopefully. Yeah, I've got the tripod set up to be extra tall. It can go taller than that, but I don't want to put it up any higher when I got the Swamp Monster right here. Yeah, you know your name, Swamp Monster. Good boy, love ya. It can actually go much, much higher than this. I just, uh, seems like a bad idea. Eh, you know what, forget it. It might be a bad idea, but the reason I got this tripod was so that I could set it up to be extra tall and do ridiculous things. Turbo, maybe you just need to go inside for a few minutes. I'm sorry, I feel so bad putting him inside while I'm out here. My shadow doesn't like being away from me. Come on, baby. Come on, good boy. You'll get a treat. I'll give you a cookie, okay? Yeah, shake off before we go inside. Shake off. That's it. Well, okay. Sometimes he knows that one, sometimes not so much. Hey, Tobes. How you doing, baby? Come on, Turbs. Come on, good boy. Okay, Turbo will be fine. Oh, that was dumb. Why'd I take the camera inside? Now I'm gonna wait for the lens to defog again. Probably unnecessary to have the camera on during this part because it's maybe just going to be annoying. It makes some people sick, but I thought it might be fun to watch back later as I try and figure out how to get this thing up in place from all the way down here on the ground. Since it's up there, it's going to be very hard to adjust it, so I'm going to just try my best to get that positioned in just the right spot. Does that look good? I think so. Let's hope it stays in focus. I think I should be able to do this in three trips. First trip being to get the soil in here. It would be smart to climb up higher so I can see into the basket better, but I'm not 
going to do that. I'm not going up any higher on this ladder because this palm tree is not planted in the ground and has some give to it. This is, there's not, there's not a lot of room in here. The way it's bent around the trunk, I don't, uh, it'll be fine. We'll just keep going, figure it out. Okay, back up for trip number two. Oh, 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 don't need that anymore. I didn't get this down in there. Oh, there's gonna have to be another trip because I have to fill this in. I have to backfill it with more soil. I was going to put one of these Candy Mountain impatiens right above there, but there's definitely not room for that. That would look so cool though, to have that in that container. Haven't given up on that yet. I might be able to do some root cleaning on this and get it to go in there. Rethinking all that stuff I said earlier about how I didn't want to plant this up on the ground and then have to tie it up there with stuff and I think that probably would have been the smarter way to do this. Take some of that soil out, that'll make some more room in there. Might be, eh, I don't know. Gonna tease these roots out, kinda get some of that soil out of there and that will hopefully make it so I can get these both in there. I don't know if that's the neighbors. I don't know what's going on up there. Maybe can make these go in together in one piece. Now I'm gonna be so pissed if I go to edit this video and rewatch this footage and this wasn't in focus. It is raining dirt on me. That's fun. Totally worth it. I don't care. Okay, I think that should do it. I could probably get a little bit more soil in there. Oh geez, you know what I should have done? Should have cut a hole in this, popped the begonia in right here, then had the impatient coming out the t It's fine. What's done is done. If this is wrapped around the trunk. I don't think the root ball would have been able to go back very far. I don't want to tear at the roots on the begonia. The impatient, it'll be fine. But the begonia, I didn't want to mess with those roots. Okay, now what? The drip. Plenty of drip line here. I just want to get it wrapped around this up there pull that up pull that back and just let the rest of that go I'm sure it's opened and facing the right direction this is a half circle emitter so it sprays out well half half you get it just does a half circle but the problem is if you don't have that adjusted properly then it's just going to shoot out the wrong side and i can't get up high enough to see if that's going to be going the right direction. Push it down as far as I can so that if it is going the wrong direction, the basket on the side will catch it. Okay, look, all done. Looks like it stayed in focus. Oh, okay, well, that was an adventure. I'd say it was worth it. Hard to see, everything's so backlit. I figured before showing off the basket, I'd go ahead and get that frond trimmed off of here because it was really bugging me. And I remember that I have my grandpa's old tree pruner, but uh, there's a reason I don't ever use it. It got stuck, it's up in there now really sure what to do about that. I just, I just keep pulling on it until it comes out. Got it. But I have these Coronas in the garage that you can pull down on, expand the handle on them. Just enough, I was barely able to grab the end of the frond, pull it down and make that cut. It's been driving me crazy all summer. Every time I'm in the house, especially from upstairs, I look outside, I'm like, oh, it's so beautiful. And just that one big dead frond that's hanging there and mocking me. You know, I have to focus on that right now. Look at the beautiful thing. The view from up on the tripod was probably better than anything you're gonna get from down here. So I don't know why I'm trying to find a shot where the sun's not backlighting everything. I'll get the drip line fixed up here. I don't wanna make any cuts to it until I've run it to the proper spot. I have to make sure I have the right length on it. That's the next step. Have to make sure that this can be watered. Pretty important. And drip is absolutely crucial for something like this because there's not a ton of soil in and around either one of those. You saw it, there's maybe four handfuls, five handfuls at most of potty mix on each side of the root balls for both of those. And I had to tear away some at the root ball on that impatient. So keeping this hydrated, very important. And it's in a coconut liner where it's gonna be getting a lot of sun. The tag for this hula pink begonia, if you didn't watch the begonia video, that's what this is. It's a trailing begonia called hula pink. It's sun or shades, so I guess we will find out. That impatient doesn't look like much now, but if that just even doubles in size, that's gonna look so beautiful up there. If that darker foliage and the beautiful flowers up there, it's a good height up there too. I can think of all kinds of fun things that I could have done with this, like putting some sort of aeroid in there that can take a lot of sun. That would have looked really nice. I can turn my exposure up. Does that help? Can you see it better now? How about now? Yeah. Begonia, I don't know if that's the best choice for something like this because I don't think this is one that's going to have much of a dangly habit to it. It's probably gonna be more of a stiff spreading habit. That's okay. 
It's still gonna look neat. I'm good with it. I have to, ooh, that exposure is way up. Turn that way down. I'm just glad to have done that. Something I've been thinking about doing all summer, just didn't really have a plant that I wanted to do it with. Nothing to really motivate me to get that done. Uh, here we are. That's gonna be beautiful. And I think that's where I gotta wrap it up. It's starting to get dark out. Got enough done in this video. I decided I'm not going to place the begonias where they're supposed to go just yet because the dogs are having a play date tomorrow, which means Louie and Nala, my sister's dogs who've been in the videos before, will be here and they tend to destroy small plants. So I'm gonna have to pick all these up and move them somewhere else tomorrow night. I don't wanna be moving them around constantly. So they're just gonna hang out here by the drip until tomorrow night, I'll get them put away. And yeah, that just seems like the smartest thing to do to preserve the plants. Hey, thanks for hanging out. It was nice being outside, getting some stuff done. I think the weather's supposed to be beautiful next week, so maybe get some things in the ground. Probably have to run a few errands because there's some things I have to do that require some hardware. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, I have a huge package on the front porch right now. And uh, I wanted to open it up for this video, but it's just disgusting outside. And tomorrow it's supposed to be like 81 and dry and that you don't get that in July very often so it seems like a good time to be sitting outside opening up a humongous box and having to assemble something I don't want to do that <laughs> right now it's just so gross out so next week's video not to be a tease but next week's video comment down below if you can guess what it is I'm very excited about it like really I'm always excited about these things I get excited easily when it comes to plants and gardening it's not a plant that's the only thing I'll say and I have talked about it in the past maybe a month or two ago in the videos it's been talked about all right hope everybody's doing well having a great day great life everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you again comment down below say hi i love talking to everybody what's going on in your garden staying cool is it too hot is it nice and cool where you are what's going on and of course as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye